Walter Russell's The Secret of Light. I'll be reading from uh, the last chapter in the book. It, I know it is pretty, uh, what's the word? It's pretty difficult to understand without visuals. And some of the visuals are just, um, they really need to be explained. But all I can say is just listen to this video at least twice. And it should start to make more sense. This is the chapter called The Shape of the Universe. This ageless universe has no shape. It has a seeming infinite extension, but that extension is a reflected one. This electric universe of two-way extended light is but a series of mirrors which reflect into each other through curved lenses. Its seeming extension might be likened to a light within a mirror-bound room. One light within such a mirror enclosure would seemingly extend infinitely but the light thus mirrored would be the same light. The reflected extension would have no reality. The idea of continuity or discontinuity is based upon mirrored effect of an initial cause. Continuity infers time. Time is but one of the effects which constitutes this universe. Time flows two ways, but the senses detect only the forward flow. They cannot detect the backward flow, which cancels out the forward flow. Time is an unreal, as the wave universe is unreal. What is true in principle of one wave is true of all waves. Each wave is a two-way reflected extension of equilibrium zero, which we call vibration. Vibration appears and disappears and reappears from their source of rest to manifest idea which is ex extent alone in rest. Just as the vibration of one wave disappears into its zero of universal stillness, so do all vibrations disappear into the universal zero of stillness. This zero universe of vibrating waves can have no shape other than a seeming one. Okay, so a little just segment here. If you've seen some of my previous videos, uh, especially the ones on light, uh, Walter Russell explains how all motion comes from stillness and that technically all motion is an illusion. So he's just edifying that here when he says that this zero universe of vibrating waves can have no shape other than a seeming one. So when we're talking about the shape of the universe, it is just a seeming one. Ultimately, there is no shape. Reading on. The voiding principle. This is a zero universe of seeming mechanical motion of force exerted in a seeming three-dimensional universe. Every action of any nature begins with zero, counts up to nine, to end and begin at zero. Beyond nine, it cannot go, but up to nine, it must go. Nine is universal. Nine is universal because it is the wave field number, the eight of the cube centered by zero of gravity in the sphere. Our original system is based upon a decimal system. Our decimal system is based upon the wave field of the cube sphere. It is as follows. Zero one two three four zero four three two one zero equals ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. I know that's a little bit confusing, but what he's basically saying is that the way that form is formed with the cubic waveform, you have to understand that in the center of a cube is a point of stillness. And if you follow a line from the center to each corner of the cube, you will have four lines in diagonals going up and four lines in diagonals going down to the corners. Those four lines equal eight. So there's eight lines. The point in the middle represents nine. So when he says this, that 
that the universal number is nine. That's what he means. There is no more numbers in the universe other than one through nine. All other numbers are made up of that. Okay, moving on. The musical scale and the spectrum of nature correspond to the wave field tones. They are as follows. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The tones that follow this are Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, Rest, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Spectrum of colors that follow this. Black, red, orange, yellow, white, yellow, green, blue, black. The tones in the light spectrum are violet and violet on each end of the spectrum. The three centering planes are centered by zero. All intersections of these planes add up to eight. Eight centered by their zero source equals nine. Likewise, the cube itself adds up to eight by counting the intersections of its six faces. Also, there are eight directions of action and eight of reaction, each eight being four pairs, which are nine by adding the centering zero. Okay, that's just what I said earlier. There's only nine numbers that make all form in the universe. Nine is the three times three of length, breadth, and height extended from zero. The length, breadth, and height of any expression is two extended zeros centered by zero. Length and breadth are static, for they are both on equipotential levels. Height, however, is dynamic, for it is radial. The universal nine of matter and space is three mirrors of rest, centered by rest, from which all three extend right angles to each other, each mirroring itself into the other. The universal nine of the octave is four pairs of opposite pressures extending diagonally from zero, which centers the cube to eight zeros, which corner the cube. Okay, that's, I know that's really hard. What he's kind of saying is that the cathode planes act as mirrors. So they reflect to each other motion. And they are at right angles. And so they reflect to each other in exactly the same way throughout the universe consistently, which tells our senses that light waves are moving. But technically, all of these cubic waveforms in the cube are still. They are just adjacent to each other into infinity, and so they appear to move. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, reading on. The measure of extension from zero to zero is desire for extension. Desire for extension from zero to zero is energy in zero. Energy extended from zero to zero is manifested by pressures of desire equally multiplied and divided, equally added and subtracted. The senses could be seen. The senses could but see the whole. There would be no play. The senses record motion alone, for the senses themselves are but motion. Motion is an illusion which only seems, it has no being. The senses do not know, but man believes that his senses do know, and in that belief lies man's confusion. The senses being but motion sense moving things, and moving light mirrored as moving things. They sense the forward movement of an airplane pulling up compression ahead of it, but they do not record the mirrored invisible counterpart of that plane equal to it in potential and speed, moving backward into a vacuum behind the plane, which simultaneously voids the compression ahead of it. This inadequacy of the senses to record the backward flow of forward moving things causes the illusion of sequence and of time. I'll repeat that last statement. This inadequacy of the senses to record the backward flow of forward moving things causes the illusions of sequence and of time. 
this principle diagram by arrows extending two ways from every element in the whole known series indicates that integration is simultaneously balanced by disintegration. No time interval elapses between the deading of any credit extended to opposites in nature. The fulcrum of all effect is the one light of God. God alone is in man and in all things. Every action is voided as it occurs, is repeated as it is voided, and recorded as it is repeated. All right, please share.